Good afternoon. Sit down, please. Before we start, just a polite reminder that to wait for the microphone before asking your question and state your name and who you work for. The first part will be a live, and then after that, we'll have an embargo for 10 p.m. for this evening UK time. Okay. Having good to see you. This closed training session you've just had, we've been told it's a bit more specific preparation for the Tunisia game. How was it? Have you been given any other ideas about maybe who's starting? Yeah, uh, obviously none of you guys were there today. Uh, I do know the team, but he said I'm not allowed to tell you. Uh, but yeah, we was working on specific things and uh, the lads are ready to go. How was it for the players that don't know? I mean, it's difficult, I guess, when, when the team's told and, and some of you know, some of you don't know that you, you're not going to make the, uh, the opening game. No, the preparation's still the same. Uh, we're a team. It's all about the team. And uh, everybody digs in, sticks together, and uh, the manager chooses the best team to face the opponent. I want to ask you about Pep Guardiola's influence on this England team. You've talked a lot about the influence he's had on your game. But obviously with Carl Walker and his changing role as well, and John Stones and Raheem Sterling, the improvement he's made there. Has, has Guardiola had a big influence on the players within this England side and, and the confidence they play with? Uh, obviously, uh, the players that are at Man Manchester City players, he's had a, an influence on us. Uh, he's helped develop us. Uh, you can see from the changes that some of the players have made this season uh, that he's definitely helped improve us. Coming into the England setup, the lads from City are very confident, as are the other lads in the squad. So, looking forward for the for the first game to start, and uh, yeah, it's exciting times. Did you watch Spain Portugal last night? And did the boys think maybe that sets the standard you've got to aspire to? Yeah, we watched the game, a uh, high intensity game, and uh, it was very exciting. Uh, we enjoyed it, but we know what we're coming up against. We know what we need to do to win games, and if we stick to our game plan, then we're quite confident that we can do very well. You're very close friends with Danny Rose, and you'll have seen a lot of what, how he's spoken very openly about his battle with depression and that sort of thing. Were you aware that he, he had those sorts of issues, and, and, and what did you make of the way he came out and talked about it? No, I wasn't aware. Uh, he's, Rose is my best mate. I've known him since I was 10 years old, so we're very close, and I wasn't aware of it at the time, but we've spoke since, and he's a strong guy mentally. He's got great people around him, so I'm sure he'll be fine going forward. And last one from me, so much talk of racism going into this World Cup and, and maybe problems in Russia. Did you have any concerns about that? Did you mention it to your family or friends that might be coming out? Uh, none of my family and friends are coming. Uh, obviously there's concerns because it's happened in the past, but we've spoke about it. Uh, we know how to, how to deal with it. We know what we need to do to overcome it. And if it does happen, we've got people around us that'll, that'll uh, help us with that sort of stuff. Uh, Steve Scott from ITV News. Morning. Um, can I just go back to uh, the team selection? Did Gareth tell you all before training this, uh, this morning or after? I'm not sure. Uh, I did remember, but I just forgot now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> did he explain, because he'd indicated to us that actually he wouldn't be uh, telling you all until much later than that. Did he explain why he's decided to tell you all today? No, we, we, we have an idea of the, the team. Uh, we, we have, we've worked on various different systems with different personnel. Uh, the team's not guaranteed to be the, the 11 players that we think it might be. It could be changes, but uh, from the setup that we've done, it's pretty, pretty clear to see who's probably going to be signed. It must be difficult for those. You, you wouldn't be human if you weren't disappointed if you weren't in the starting 11. What do you have to tell yourself? to keep motivated in that situation? Honestly, in this squad that we've got of uh, young, exciting players, it's, it's not like that at all. Uh, the, the team that's picked to play, everybody will be behind them. Uh, everybody will have a part to play, whether it's in training or playing in games or being a leader, voicing their opinions, keeping few people positive. And uh, it's just one of those things, when you're called upon, uh, you're expected to give nothing less than 100%, and that's what everybody will be looking to do. You mentioned there how well you get on and how, how close you are as a squad. Is there a danger at all that because of that, because of the relaxed environment, because we're so isolated here, that complacency could sort of leak in because there's such a long lead into the first game? No, I don't think so. Uh, we are a close, close bunch, but once training starts, it's fiery, uh, it's very spicy, the intensity is there, and uh, people are not afraid to dig people out. And Nothing's ever personal. Uh, that's what I found with the, with this squad. Nothing's ever personal, and 
if somebody's got something to say, as long as it's constructive, constructive criticism, people take it on the chin. Uh, and just one more from me. Your missus is uh, very close to giving birth, isn't she? Are you uh, talking to her every day? Is that difficult for you being out here while that's going on at home? A uh, little bit. Uh, obviously, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's there and uh, it's, it's very exciting, if I'm being honest. Uh, it's been a fantastic year for me on a personal level and to be expecting our third child is absolutely amazing. I'm, I'm waiting on the, on the text to say get back home, but so far she's doing fine. Fabian, hello, Dan Rowe and BBC. It's been a long build-up this for England because they're one of the teams who played their first game last. Are you, are you ready now? Do you, it's 48 hours away. Uh, is the excitement beginning to build? Yeah, we're raring to go. We've had a great camp. Uh, everybody's where they need to be fitness-wise. Uh, everybody's mindset's heading in the same direction. So we're just ready to go now. Games have started, so we can't wait to get going. Yeah, and what's the mood like in the camp? I mean, everyone's making a lot of just how relaxed it is. There's none of the usual dramas. You're injury-free as a squad. Does it? Do you feel a sense of calm and, and serenity about it, or is there also a tension there as well, given how close this match now is? No, I don't feel any tension. Uh, like you said, it's, it, it comes across really relaxed, and it, it actually is very relaxed. But like I said uh, previous, once the training starts, everybody's bang on it, and uh, I expect the same once the games start. Other England managers in the past would have kept the starting eleven a bit of a secret until nearer the time perhaps even the day of the match, to keep everybody on their toes. Do you think it's a good thing that there's more awareness now and you, you, you've got a very good idea, you say, of your, where you stand? Is that, is that a healthy thing or is there a danger it might leak out? Is that, does that, is that a problem? How do you no, I don't it? think it'll leak out. Uh, you just tried, but I never leaked it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think for certain players, they, they probably would like to know uh, so they can get themselves prepared. Uh, but whether you selected on the day of the game or the day before, I think it, it's all the same thing. As long as your mindset's it's, uh, clear, you know what you need to do, you understand the game plan and what your role is, you're pretty clear in what you need to do. The media seem to have a pretty good idea of the starting 11. You're not among those 11. How, how do you... Is that, is really? That, I'm afraid not. <laughs> <laughs> how, do you, uh, how do you feel about that? I mean, do you, did, did you expect to be... I mean, obviously, it was your first call-up for quite some time since 2015, so it would have been a big challenge to get in maybe, so maybe just to be in the squad is a, is a triumph for you, how, how, or are you disappointed not to be in that? In what no, looks I like? don't have any disappointment ever, to be honest with you, I'm um, quite a positive person, uh, I live in the present, to take each day as it comes and I'm absolutely delighted to be in this squad with this group of young players, uh, probably one of the oldest uh, now, uh, not being in the squad for quite a t quite a long time now, but yeah, I'm excited about about the the challenge ahead. And uh, whenever I'm needed, I'll give nothing less than 100%. It might be on Monday, it might not be. <laughs> the two big favourites in this World Cup are Brazil and Germany, two teams that in the friendlies England got draws against. But there was always that feeling, even though there were strong performances or suggestion that those teams were holding something back, that they have an extra gear that England don't possess. You're part of a team that have had those games where they could hold back and then put on the tempo at club level. Do England have that fifth gear that we know Germany and Brazil have? Yeah, I, f I believe so. Uh, I mean, the Premier League's probably the best league in the, in the world and uh, a lot of our players playing week in, week out, the performances that they've reached this season has been absolutely phenomenal so talking about the fifth gear I think we've definitely got that calibre of players in our squad uh, very exciting very fast loads of athleticism and durable young players fearless so I think we've got that gear yeah more to come then you've seen that I've definitely seen uh, great things in this camp so I'm excited for for the first game to start there are a lot of players that have had to made big commitments, left big clubs or gone to big clubs knowing they would have to force their way through. You went to Manchester City from Aston Villa, you went on loan to Leeds, you had to really fight your way through. You're now championed by Pep Guardiola who has just been so vocal on how much you've taken on what he wanted to see from you. He was very vocal about what he needed to see from you. So many battlers that have got to the top flight of the game. What does that give you when you're under the cosh on a world stage? I think uh, from a very young age I've been, I've been uh, guided in a way that 
hard work beats talent and uh, it's the way I've always been, the way I'll continue to be. Uh, obviously Pep's seen that in me. There's obviously a lot more talented players than me in, in the Manchester City team. But my work ethic is probably better than theirs, maybe. And uh, I think Pep likes that and he's been great with me. He's worked very closely with me as the rest of his staff are. And yeah, this season's been absolutely class for me. And to top it off with a World Cup, I'm absolutely delighted. Do you work harder than Kevin De Bruyne? Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you put that in the headline. <laughs> Um, I've got to ask you about the phenomenon that is this white light season. When we all arrived here, it, there's an odd strange thing. I've spoken to Socceroos players that were based here as well for a little bit. Even though you've got those black blackouts, you know it's light outside. Have the players adjusted now? Are they sleeping all right? Yeah, we're sleeping fine. I mean, we've got a great team here. Uh, we've brought our own mattresses. We've got our own pillows. So we, we got used to them in, in England, St George's Park. We brought them with us. So... It's literally like moving home from home. Uh, when we arrived into the hotel, there was a lot of homeless stuff. We had pictures of our families in our bedrooms. We had home comforts, if you like. I brought my Yorkshire tea bags, and uh, yeah, it's just like being in Yorkshire, really. Any, are you wearing your eye mask? I know I'm wearing my eye mask, are you? No, we've, the, the curtains are not bad, to be honest, no. so we, we're not getting much light through my bedroom. Any of, them wearing, any of your teammates tried them on, been wearing them? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We can't call England the Mask Crusaders then. That's what I'm getting at. <laughs> Are you going to go in there and be superheroes? Can you let's, do it? Let's hope we can. I mean, we're very confident going into it. Uh, like I said, it's a fearless group of players. So let's see what we can do. Mask Crusaders. Thank you. I have a question here, please. So can I just, just one quick one while the microphone's going past me? You mentioned earlier that um, your family were not coming out to watch you. Is that to do with the uh, fear of how they'll be treated, the, the racism issue within Russia, or something completely different? No, not at all. Uh, my family, they're, they're, they're tough. They, they, they won't be... Uh, I don't think stuff like that would get to them. Uh, the reason my family aren't coming is because my wife's very big at the minute. She's about to drop. Uh, <laughs> I've got two, two young children who are at school and they're not getting out of school. And then I've got my mother and my sisters that they've got children, so that's the only reason my family aren't coming. Uh, Fabian, Ellie McDonald on Me Sport News. I'm um, just going back to last night's game between Spain and Portugal. It's all everybody is talking about today. A lot of people believe it's signified the real start of the World Cup. Did you watch it with the team? Did you watch it on your own? And what was your reaction to Cristiano Ronaldo's performance? Yeah, we watched it together. Uh, we've got a big screen in the hotel. And we watched it as a squad. Uh, we was excited. Uh, it was a great game. Obviously, Ronaldo does what Ronaldo does, and uh, it was phenomenal to see what he did. Two great teams, and yeah, we're excited for for our campaign to start now. Did you expect a result like that, three all, Spain Portugal, especially after Spain, the, the week they've just had with their with their coach going? Uh, did you expect to see a, a, a game of that quality? Yeah, I mean, with Spain, they've, they've got a system in, in the way they play. They've done it for, for a long time now. Obviously, you would imagine that they'd be distracted with the fact that their manager left, but they've got experienced players in there. David Silva, who I know very well, uh, spoke to him most days this week, and he's very comfortable. Uh, they're a great team. They've won, won major trophies before, so I expected them to be as good as they was. Uh, Obviously, Portugal, they've got Ronaldo as that threat, but they've got phenomenal players around him as well. So we was, we was looking forward to an exciting game, and that's what we got. And did you have a favourite Ronaldo goal? No, to be honest, uh, no, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, Miguel Angel Moreno from the Spanish USA and CF. Uh, continuing on the match of yesterday, do you think Spain, uh, even knowing the situation with uh, the coach, is continue being um, a favourite in this World Cup? Yeah, like I said, they've got a lot of history behind them. Uh, they probably will be one of the one of the favourites. But we expect that from an outfit like Spain. They've got fantastic players, so there's not just Spain as well. There's a lot of fantastic teams, so it'll be an exciting World Cup. 
Any more questions for the live section? Just one more here. Last one. Um, you, you've now done your research, I imagine, and watched your videos. What's your thoughts on Tunisia? Because we have seen Russia surprise everyone with an impressive opener, and we've seen the Socceroos go hard against France. What's your impression on Tunisia? Because they are a form side. Yeah, they're a good team. Uh, they distribute the ball well. Uh, they take risks. They like to play football. We've been ex we've been uh, we've been watching a lot of clips on them. We've still got a few more clips to videos to watch on them, probably. Not tonight, tomorrow. So we know what they're about. We've got our game plan in place and if we execute it, I'm sure we'll be fine. What surprised you about them? They take risks. Uh, they like to play football. Uh, I, I want to say similar to how Manchester City play. They, they bring the centre-backs all the way back. The full-backs play wide and they try to play out from the back. Uh, they do give the ball away sometimes, but they, they stick to what they know and what they're working at, and they try to play football. Thank you. Okay, that concludes the live section.